You don't have to spend a zillion dollars on your first antenna to get great performance with your new HF station. Sure, a stack Yagi on a 200 foot tower would be nice, but it's not where you want to start. Let's cover the top five HF radio antennas for new hams coming up. KN4NEH, this is I am Jim N4BFR, one of the instructors at Ham Radio Prep. Let's not minimize the importance of a good antenna. Your incoming and outgoing signals depend on it. As a new ham, you're going to have to deal with lots of trade-offs as you decide on an HF antenna. Money, available space, and bands you want to use are big factors in choosing an HF antenna. Let's go through five HF antennas you might consider for your first HF station. Don't stop this video when you find an antenna you like. Later, we'll tell you about tools to get your antennas optimized. We've also got a few ideas for antennas you can grow into, and a couple that'll work in a pinch. Our first pick is the non-resident end-fed antenna. This antenna is great because it's affordable and easy to install. All you need is a tree and some space. Also called the end-fed long wire, it's a cable attached to a 91 ballon that will use part of the feed line coax to radiate. If you don't know the term ballon, it stands for balanced to unbalanced, and it's where the coax unbalanced line is matched to the antenna. Since the end-fed half wave is a long wire, there's no need to do much analysis or tuning to make it work. Just connect up the distant end of the antenna in a tree and the ballon end near your operating position. Connect the antenna to the feed line, connect that to your radio's tuner, and you're good to get on the air. That's why we chose it in our HF Masterclass, our online class that teaches you how to get on HF step by step. As we mentioned in the beginning, one of the things you'll need to manage with all the antennas we discuss is length. An 80 meter end fan half wave antenna is about 135 feet long and usually covers many bands between 80 and 6 meters. A 40 to 6 meter version will be about 70 feet. Check your available space and then match that to the product information before you buy. How much will you spend? We've seen end-fed half-wave antennas cost anywhere from $90 to $200, depending on the parts it comes with and if it's single or multi-band. When choosing an end-fed half-wave, watch the power rating for the antenna so you don't deliver too much power and damage your equipment. Some companies make lightweight QRP versions of antennas that only support 20 watts. Others might support up to a kilowatt maximum if they're made with more robust parts. If this is going to be your first antenna, and it's a good choice for one, it's probably better to buy new than try and build and adjust. That way you can isolate problems to the operator instead of the gear. Plus, you can always use your end-fed wire antenna as a portable option down the road, even if you upgrade your home antenna. If you polled 100 hams using HF today, I'll bet a majority will tell you that a wire dipole was their first HF antenna. It's simple to build and to use. Many of the principles you have or will study in the general license course focuses on the dipole. So what is a dipole? It's two, die, wires, poles, connected in the middle. When matched well, it operates nicely with a 50 ohms impedance, and that's important to match most modern radios and coax. The wires are usually one quarter wavelength on each side. That makes up an antenna with a half wavelength total. For 20 meters, that's around 33 feet across or 16.5 feet on each side. So should you build or buy your dipole? I've built a dipole antenna directly into an SO239 connector with no balance, but I've been doing this a little while. If you want to, you can go the route we did in our HF Masterclass example. 
get some 16 gauge speaker wire, an SO239 connector, and wire them together. Now, we 3D printed a center element and insulators, but you can use scrap wood or plastic if you have it at home. If you decide to build, consider buying a ballon like this one. It will help keep current off your feed line. We've seen them for $30 a gigaparts. Buying a dipole was not a bad investment and we saw several new ones at a ham fest. At a cost of $60 for a single band wire dipole, you might just spend more in parts to build your own, so it's a good value. Let's touch on one other type of horizontal wire antenna here, which is the off-center fed dipole. This lets you have more flexibility on your feed point placement. With a dipole, you're committed to being in the middle. And an end fed has to be, well, at the end. We found the MaxCod OCF for less than $80 at a ham fest. Having a half wavelength of wire in the air for an antenna is really the best way to start, but not everyone can do this. So let's talk about ham sticks and trap dipoles. These are dipole antennas that are electrically long, but physically shorter. A hamstick dipole for 80 meters might only be 20 feet or so across, whereas a wire dipole for 3.9 megahertz should be around 100 feet longer. So how does it work? By using coils or traps, the antenna is electrically lengthened. You can see in the design of the hamstick, the wire coiled around one end of the elements. You can get into a single band hamstick style dipole for less than $100. That's two sticks and the center mount where you connect your coax. If you want a different band, you simply swap out the sticks. A similar concept is a system called the buddy pole, which is a trap dipole. For less than $300, you get this very portable system. You adjust it by changing telescopic lengths and moving a jumper around on a trap. By adding the right amount of length and coil in, you tune your antenna to be on frequency. Great options for small footprint operating or going portable. Both of these are buy options versus something you'll make at home in the beginning. A vertical antenna is one where your driven element goes up instead of out. It can definitely be a space saver and it's good for many different bands. Many hams find the 33 foot vertical to be the sweet spot for size. That represents a quarter wavelength of the 40 meter band. Now getting a wire up and down in a tree is an easy part, but radials are an important part of this antenna's design. Think of a vertical as a dipole turned at 90 degrees. When you do that, you see the radials represent half of the antenna's performance. Now there are many ways to do radials. Some use wires at different wavelengths to help bring in different bands. Some POTA hams use mesh as a broadband set of radials. This can be one project you build or buy. One thing you may want to invest in is the ballon, which is where the coax connects to the antenna elements. DX Engineering has a nice article about selecting ballons. It covers a wide variety of antenna scenarios, including a quarter wave vertical. If you're buying instead of building, shop around. Good commercial options start around $250 and go up from there, but there are a lot of options. We've even seen a version with an inflatable vertical section for easy setup and teardown, if that's important to you. Like the trapped horizontal antenna, you can get a trapped vertical for portability. We found a little telescoping antenna element with traps for around $60. How about taking some of the performance of a horizontal dipole and adding some of the space-saving benefits of a vertical? A ham named Lewis Varney combined lengths of wire for a dipole with some resonant ladder line. That created the antenna we know as a G5RV. It's a very popular antenna among new hams. In its full 80 meter to 10 meter design configuration, the G5RV measures about 102 feet across and just under 30 feet high. You can fit it in your backyard in several ways, 
not horizontally, sloping, or as an inverted V. When paired up with a tuner, you get performance on a lot of bands. You can build it yourself from plans right on Wikipedia, but for around $110, pick up a kit and be ready to go. If you only have 50-ish feet available for installation horizontally, there is an alternative. The G5RV Junior is a 40 to 10 meter option for less than $90. Many times, it's not just getting an antenna installed, it's getting it optimized. If an antenna's SWR or feed point impedance is off, you'll lose output power. That's because mismatches get converted into heat instead of radio waves. So let's talk through a few tools that'll help you build or buy the best options. If you want to know how much space you need for an antenna, we recommend using a dipole calculator. You can find them online, like this one at West Mountain Radio. If you prefer to do the math yourself, a half-wavelength dipole antenna length can be roughly calculated. Divide 468 by your desired frequency in megahertz. So, let's do the math on calculations for a 10-meter dipole at 28.400 megahertz. 468 divided by 28.4 equals 16.47 feet rounded. Each element or side would then be a little less than eight and a quarter feet. Now we said that's a rough calculation. Your performance will depend on height above ground and things like the velocity factor of the wire. That's how well the wire conducts. One of the things I like to do when building a dipole is get a close measurement using the formula. Then I leave it a little long and I adjust it as I hang it up using an antenna analyzer. To adjust the dipole, you raise it up close to its operating position and then look at an analyzer. It'll show you the SWR and impedance at that frequency. Here, take two measurements, one for your desired frequency and one for the best SWR nearby. If that best frequency is higher than your desired resonant frequency, your wire's too short. If the best frequency is lower, your wire's too long and you need to trim it. We've discussed this among the Elmers and getting below 1.5 to 1 on SWR is a good sweet spot. An antenna analyzer runs $100 to $300, but it is a really good long-term investment for your shack. If money's an issue, check with the local club or Elmer to see if they have a loaner. Two more tools to help you out. First, consider getting into the theory of antenna design. Customized for things like height above ground and obstacles in your yard with modeling software. A free program like EZNEC runs on your computer and lets you design your antenna for the performance you want. Finally, if this is all above your head because you just don't remember it, don't worry. This antenna information can be found in your general course studies. Go back and reread it. If you're a ham radio prep student, reread the general course lessons related to antennas, which are lessons 20 and 21. We also cover much more in antennas in the HF Masterclass. There are plenty of other antennas we just didn't cover. We skipped a few because they go a little bit beyond beginner level. We also passed on a few due to price or size, but we have some quick notes for you. Most of the antennas we covered don't offer much additional gain. Gain is amplification in a direction. For that, look into something like Yagi antennas. They're more complex to set up and require some way to get them pointed in the right direction. However, you get more send and receive performance for your buck. Plus, adding a Yagi is much less expensive than adding an amplifier to your rig. We skipped mag loops because of their price to performance ratio. They run about $300 for 25 watts out. Some like them for small space performance, so consider them as an alternative to something like ham sticks. Horizontal loops are probably underrated. It's a big project, but if you can run one wire around your entire backyard or in your attic, you have a horizontal loop antenna. The trade-off is nice performance on many bands. These loops also tend to be quieter if you have the space to trade off. 
There are books written on the hundreds of different antenna styles we didn't cover. If you're trying to find just the right one for you, find something like Wire Antenna Classics or the HF Antenna Collection. They might be in your club's library to review. Building antennas is also a great club project too. Or do some research online. For instance, there are lots of cousins of the G5RB design just a few clicks away. We started off by saying that good antennas are important and we're sticking with that. However, we also believe that any antenna is better than no antenna at all. To that point, we want to point you to the Strange Antenna Challenge. It's a recurring event where people just see what they can use for antennas. I participated in this with the local club and made two strange antennas. The first one was a vertical using a string of 40-ish diet soda cans. Made a few contacts around the US with that. Then the next year, I came back with nothing but a roll of tinfoil. Folded and connected up as an inverted V dipole, I worked DX more than a thousand miles away in South America. I've seen others use ladders, a sign for an ATM, and one club member made a pretty effective six meter dipole from just a pair of crutches. So, while a good antenna is important, any antenna may be even more important. But no matter what you use, remember to be safe with power lines and RF safety as well. Before we go, let's review those top five antennas for new HF stations. The NFED half wave for 80 meters is 135 feet and needs virtually no adjusting to get it out in the air. It runs from $90 to $200. A wire dipole is a super basic antenna that works well. For 80 meters, you're also going to be around 135 feet total length. You can build or buy this one, but a packaged new single band dipole starts around $60. Hamsticks or trap dipoles can give you one band at a time in a space that's 20 feet or so wide. A single band hamstick rig will cost you around $100. The 33 foot vertical is another basic staple of ham radio antennas. It's 40 meters and higher in the basic configuration. Good commercial options start around $250 and go up from there. Finally, Mr. Varney's G5RV will fit in a space around 100 feet wide and 30 feet high. This compromised dipole is versatile. You can build it from plans online or buy a package kit starting at just over $100. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, we hope you'll give us a like and subscribe. We'll bring you more videos to help new hams make the most of their ham radio experience. I'm Jim N4BFR for the entire ham radio prep team. We hope you get that antenna in the air. We hope to hear you on the air with it soon.